Hi everybody, welcome to a Facebook Live with Jeannie. I am Jeannie Nielsen, the card lady, and I'm very excited to be here with you today. And you know what I just realized? I forgot to go horizontal before I went, so we are going to have to do things vertical today. But I'm very excited to be here. We are going to talk Easter Bunny, because next week is Easter. Can you believe it? Um, less than 14 days from today, we are celebrating Easter. Now, I like to do my religious cards. I'm very into that, of course, but I wanted to focus on the Easter Bunny this week because I have the punch and did I bring the punch? Yes, I have the punch. I have the punch. I have everything ready to go. I hope um, I may have to run to the other side of the room because I'm a little frazzled. I haven't been in my Stanford wall weekend. I've been visiting with my parents. They've been up here from upstate New York. So I've had a wonderful visit with them. And now we have to stamp. So let's get going. I missed you last week because of my work schedule. This week is just as crazy if you can believe it. Hi, Judy. Welcome to my Facebook Live. I'm going to show you the cards that we're going to be making this week. Um, I am only going to show you two cards, but um, I'm going to show you the other two projects as well. But these are easy cards, especially if you have the punch. But if you don't have the punch, one of these cards you can easily make just by doing some fussy cutting. So here we go. Um, I'm going to flip down because I'm going to get right to it because my parents are still visiting and I want to have some time with them. But I love the cards that I've made and I hope you will too. Um, all of them focus on different designer papers. And I actually wanted to do one other uh, card um, using the butterfly paper, but I ran out of time. So here we are. Let's uh, get ready to flip down. I'm going to flip down so that I can't even see myself. Um, Let's go like this. Sorry, backwards. I'm not going to see comments and I apologize for that. I'll try to stay in camera as much as possible. Here is my March host code. We've used that for a couple more days. And let's start with my favorite card first. This card, love this card. Isn't this just so beautiful? And I'm going to flip down and make sure. There we go. You can see what I'm talking about. This uses the Playing in the Rain designer paper, and it's so easy. Aren't these uh, daisies just so fun and so spring-like? It just makes you so happy. Um, I'm going to show you how I made this card. Super easy. It's actually a fun fold card. So let's... Oh, you know what? Yeah, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. I didn't bring thick white paper for here, but we're going to be okay for this one. I keep coming up with things that I have forgotten, but so first I'm gonna bring my scoring tool right into the focus. This is a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of balmy blue cardstock. Um, we are going to find out as demonstrators in the next couple of hours what cards are uh, what colors are retiring. I'm pretty sure balmy blue is a safe color. It's such a happy color, but who knows what colors are going and what colors are replacing it. So. Anyway, to make this card, we're going to start by scoring it in half. So you're going to score it at four and a quarter, right down the middle. Now to make this fancy fold, like I did, eh, what would it be called? I don't know. Anyway, not sure. There's probably a name for it, but I'm never going to come up with it on camera. Notice that I just flipped the paper because I want the bump to be in the middle. And so on this one, I'm going to score between the zero and the four and a quarter inch mark at two and one eighth. Right there. And there we go. And that's really all the scoring I have to do. So I'm going to move my scoring tool out of the way and hopefully not step on it and make a ruckus. Okay, so I am going to fold this in half right on the line. I'm going to use my bone folder. This was my gift from Judy at Backstage. I use it all the time, Judy. And then I'm going to flip it back because see, the bump is in the middle. I want that on the inside. Um, if you do it the other way, you can do it the other way, but it tends to break the fibers. You're going to have much better success in a nice cleaner fold if you fold it with a bump in the middle. That's all there is to the folding. Makes it look like a super, super difficult card, and it's really not. Um, you know what you have to have for this card, first of all, though? You need the basic white cardstock that you pulled out. So hang on one second. Okay. I have my two pieces of basic white cardstock. One is going to go on the front, just like that, and one is going to go on the inside. 
let's start with the one inside. Did I stamp anything inside? I really didn't, but I easily could. Um, I'm using the Easter Bunny set. This paper is also the back of Playing in the Rain. So you see the yellow gingham check. Um, I really like that check. We are going to attach that right to the edge. And yeah, I've got to ungum this. I usually either end up pulling off a little fibrin sheath of glue. I assume it's fibrin sheath because that's what they um, have when somebody has a clot in the hospital. Or I have my handy dandy straight pin right here ready to make my hole. So there we go. We should be good now because I can feel that there's plenty of glue in here. I prefer Tombow glue over the seal or the seal plus, even though I'm going to choose the seal plus more than the seal. Okay, that's all I'm going to do to that. Um, you know what? Maybe because I have the eggs right here, maybe we are going to stamp a couple of eggs down at the bottom, right at the bottom. And we can color them in if we want to, or we don't have to. Am I still in the picture? Let's see if I can go down a little further, a little closer. There we go. Okay, my glue, my memento. And then what I am going to do is just glue this on the inside. If I'm going to color it, I'll color it later. We don't need to take time for that now, or maybe I will in a second because this isn't gonna take me that long, I don't think, because I've done a lot of the prep work ahead of time, which is why I'm late. Okay, so here we go. We're just gonna attach that right to the inside, just like that. Perfect, ready to go. I am gonna color those later, but not right now. Um, I cut, I have a piece of my basic white cardstock. Like I said, this is four by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of the Playing in the Rain designer paper. And I think what I did was, I think I cut it at six inches, and this is eventually three and three quarter inches by five inches. I cut it off the bottom. You'll be able to figure out, you just have to figure out how much of the clouds versus the flowers you want to show. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had gone up a little higher on the flowers, so there were less flowers and a little bit more of the clouds so they weren't cut off, but three and three quarter inches by five inches. And like you see, this is the, plaid or the gingham pattern on the back. So all I did was use the remnants of my three and three quarter inches by five inches when I cut a bunch of them to use my, this is this um, border right here is one inch by five and a quarter inches. So that's a nice way to dress up your cards without doing any stamping inside if you don't want to. There we go, ready to go. Isn't that so fun? I could use the loose daisy embellishments here easily just to um, add to that, but I don't have them here. So we're going to skip that for right now. And we are just going to stamp our bunny. So you can see that this is my standing up bunny. And I'm gonna show you how I colored him too. Um, how I colored the eggs. I kind of pulled out the colors from the paper. Balmy blue and I believe granny apple green. And this is probably Daffodil Delight Light. So. I don't think I used the dark one at all. So let's put this aside for a second and let's do some stamping. Let's just go like that. I'm going to stamp my bunny. And when I stamp with Memento, I like to either tap it, but I do like to kind of squish it. And you are only gonna be able to do this with your memento. You can't do this with your regular foam pads. You do that and your stamp is going to be a mess. We're gonna stamp it like this, right near the edge. Count to like three seconds and hold it and then you can take it off. Um, because it's photopolymer, you might, might wanna have a piercing pad underneath. I got lucky and it looks really good. Um, we're going to stamp the carrot right here on the edge. And we are going to stamp the eggs. So these are our Easter eggs. Yeah, I just stuck my hand in the Memento ink. There we go. And that's all we have to do. The next thing we're going to do with this is fussy cut it, which by the magic of television, I have already done. 
So we are ready to go and we're just going to color and I'll tell you the colors that I used here. Let's see. Let me move this off to the side. I have, I labeled the ends of mine and it's my fine tip that I always put little, these are like three eighth inch circles. I bought these from Wendy Cranford way back when. I almost can't see the thing anymore, especially with my glasses and the light. So I have daffodil dark and I have daffodil light. I have granny apple green light. Nope, granny apple green dark. And I have balmy blue dark. Oh, I must have used the light on the other one. So I've used the dark of the daffodil delight, the granny apple green and the balmy blue. And this nice brown here is uh, SU300. So this is one of our naturals and I really liked the color of it. So if you have our natural um, blends in all the uh, five different colors with the light and dark shades, the, uh, it goes 100 to 1000 for your colors. This is the 300. And then of course we have to have pumpkin pie dark for our carrot. So let's start by coloring our carrot real quick. And there's nothing to coloring it. I'm not doing any shading on this bunny whatsoever. So this is a super quick card, except for uh, cutting out your um, different elements. There's my carrot all ready to go. And I'm gonna use my card here because I like how I colored that. Uh, let's see, I did the polka dots in my granny apple green. And once again, like I said, all I did was pull out the colors from the card here. So I could have, if there was a Mango Melody, which there used to be, I probably would have used Mango Melody for my uh, Easter eggs instead. But okay, so we're just gonna do the stripes here. That's the end of the green. Let's do some Balmy Blue. We're going to do around the polka dots. See how quick it colors? really really quick and then I'm going to do my squares and I'm alternating so that it is like a gingham pattern there's a tiny tiny little piece of something that's going to show up that I didn't color it if I don't right there right there there we go let's use our oh I see what I did I used the daffodil light to color my squares here there we go. That's what I did. Oops, I missed one. See, it shows up when you do it. When you do the every other, you see what you missed. Okay. A little bit right there. See, this is only taking me a second. And then I used the death, the, the uh, you know what? I'm gonna use the light just like I, no, I am gonna use the dark because that's the closest to the mango melody that I'm going to get. So that's, um, kind of the other yellow that's in the card. So we have that here. You see here that we have the eggs that are a set of three. I'm going to divide up my set of three and it's real easy. Um, I cut around them and then I'm just going to cut right there and maybe I'll just round out this edge just a tiny bit more. There we go. Perfect. Okay, let me show you how I colored the bunny and then you'll see how to put it together. It's so easy. Um, what I like to do is start by outlining. I am going to use my thing and I'm going to color to the eye, down a little bit around. And I'm going to outline the whole thing because I want to make sure that I'm not going to color my belly or anything else. So this I can see right down here is part of the other paw. We'll do that. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to go like this and this way I am ensuring that I am not going to color in my white parts. Um, I think I did the whole ear here, the brown, and I'll go like this. I could add some pink to his cheeks, but with this bunny I didn't end up adding any pink. And you see how fast this colors up now that I've done all the outlining. Super quick. And because it's our blends and not our markers, 
It looks like I can color like a pro, even if I can't. So I hope you guys have your blends. They come in just about all the colors. It looks like they usually end up missing about um, one to two, about two per color family. And they, of course, do it in all the in colors, which I love. Okay, so we've got our little bunny tail. We've got our ears. Our, we've got our little stomach. Perfect. I could give them blue eyes, but this one's not going to have blue eyes. Okay, then the only other thing I did, and this is only going to take a second, if I have the stamp here, where do I have the stamp? I am going to stamp Happy Easter. And you know what I chose to stamp it in? I chose Pacific Point. And I don't know about you guys, but if I was taking bets on a color that was retiring, I have a feeling Pacific Point is going to be one of them. And the reason I think that is because I hardly ever see it in a designer paper. So we're going to stamp Happy Easter. And I did do a card where I needed to divide this up. So I actually, this I shouldn't admit this, but you can't even tell. I actually cut the stamp apart. And there it is. But it fits right back together again really easily. So hopefully I'm lined up. Doesn't look bad. It's a little, it's a little wonky, but not terrible. Okay. Um, what else do I want to do? I wanted to clean my stamp before I did my next card, but that's okay. What we're going to do is finish putting this one together. I'm going to, this is already glued on. I am just going to flip this over and I'm going to keep my fingers on this side because I want to make sure that I don't put the glue on that side. I'm only going to put the glue on the right side, which is the left side, the left facing side when I attach it. And I'm going to center it on all three sides there. See how I did that? If I center on all three sides, then it's actually centered on the fourth side as well. So we got that. Okay, now I gotta, oh my goodness, did I take all of my dimensionals away from here? I did, hang on one second. In case you're wondering, my dimensionals that I use on my desk are usually very close to um, a table here that I use for creating. And this weekend is my stamp camp, my Sentimental Park stamp camp. Um, you still have two days to sign up for it. I love the cards. I teamed up with Monica Giberti on this. Um, we did a sampler and four cards, a calendar card, which is considered a 3D and a treat holder. And then we have an alternate, uh, class or additional class silly goose also using the regency park designer paper and i just love every single one of the projects i'm so excited about it it's a lot of die cutting but i seriously love the projects so i'm i have three people so far signed up for it and don't forget you can get it to go too so i'm going to put this little bunny right here in the middle hopefully he's straight then i'm going to i think they can actually use, I think I can use the big dimensionals for these eggs too. Let's do that. We're gonna do one right here and another kind of fell by the wayside. Maybe he passed it, didn't notice it. I don't know if this Easter Bunny, maybe he dropped it out of his basket. Put that one right there. And then the only other thing I need is my colored carrot, which is right there. And what I'm going to do is two mini dimensionals on the back of it, right here and right here. And I'm going to put that just inside of his cute little arms right there. Isn't that so cute? Okay, so the only other thing I want to do is add my Happy Easter. And I'm going to put this one below the clouds. Let's add this below the clouds. I'm going to pop this up as just like the other ones. And this fun, fancy fold card is going to impress your people. And it only took minutes to make. And like I said, some of it is the fussy cutting, but I'm going to put it right there. Voila. Look at that. Isn't that so cute? Okay, you know what? Let's do this again. Only takes a second. I'm going to color my Easter eggs inside so that I have a completely colored card. That was the dark. 
this is the light. I'm going to do every other, every other, every other, there, there, up in the corner, down in the corner. Okay, that's that. My blue, this is the balmy blue dark, like I said. Thank you for leaving comments, guys. By the way, I am, I do check my comments all the time, but because I am not flipped down, because I didn't do, I just kind of messed up when I, I did this. I didn't go horizontal and I didn't flip upward, so I'm not seeing, but that's okay. I will catch your comments later. I hope you're liking this card. It's such an easy card, and this playing in the rain paper, it's kind of too bad that they don't have a whole pack just of the one that I used, isn't it? Because isn't that so cute with the daisies? I just love that. There we go. Minutes to, to do this card. Maybe not minutes. It might have taken me 20 minutes now that I look at my clock. I was a little late joining you today, but okay. Card number two. This one is another fun card, and but this one is a little bit more elegant. This is my other card. I used the Soft Succulent. This is an in-color for just a couple more weeks if you don't have it. Um, I don't know if it's going to stay or not as an, a color with the color refresh. So I would advise that you get it if you love this color. Um, I don't know where I put my uh, scissor. So, oh, it's down below. Okay, so I've already done a lot of the prep work on this card. We're going to do a little bit of embossing, but... One of the things that I love, so I embossed this layer. This is the cane weave folder. Um, this is one of our new folders, and um, it looks like a basket. It reminds me of an Easter basket. That's why I use that. So I am attaching that to my soft succulent that did not make it over here. Hang on one second again. Good thing my room isn't miles long or I'd be way behind. I can attach this right away, right from the very beginning. So let's glue this right on. There is a right and a wrong side, I feel. That looks like the wrong side to me. That looks like the cane weave. Because of the um, all the nooks and crannies, I probably need a little bit more glue than I normally use. Still not a whole bunch. This next layer is just a strip of our rose gold. Isn't this so pretty? Um, it's kind of a coppery color, but a gold color. And I felt like it really brought out the colors in this paper. So this paper is our country bouquet paper. Remember from Valentine's Day? Looks like spring. I love it. And then of course this gold. Oh my goodness, you guys have to get this. This is the shimmer paper. Um, it almost, you almost miss this. Now, where is the shimmer paper? I don't remember what suite it, the swim, shimmer paper is in, but it is so beautiful. Um, there's a gold, there's a purple, and there's a green. And the green almost looks like the soft succulent. And I wanted to use that. It just didn't make it work. So that's why I didn't. So this is the gold. This is a three and a quarter inch square. This designer paper, Country Bouquet, is a three inch square. So we're just going to glue that together. There's not a lot to this card either, um, but the one thing that you do have to have, unfortunately, is the punch to make this. But you could use this whole setup for any other card too. If you have a punch of something else, like the Tropical Leaf, that's one of the online exclusives, use a different paper behind it. You could do the Tropical Leaf. What I did was, I took this piece, and this just happened to be in my scraps. It was actually scored um, for a tag for Christmas time. One of the seasonal labels dies, I believe. And I embossed it with one of the basics embossing folders. This is one of the three that's available in our online exclusives right now. If you go online and uh, click on the online exclusives when you get to my page on stampingwithgenie.stampinup.net, it shows you the online exclusives up at the top. There's the rhinoceros, there's the tropical leaf. Um, there are the embossing folders. And embossing folders, for the most part, never show up really well anywhere in the catalog. 
but trust me, you want to have them. It's a set of three for $30. This one looks like starfish to me. Um, there's also a polka dot, and that's the one I used here. And the only reason I'm not using it is because I've misplaced it in my room, and I have to find it before Thursday night. And then there's also, um, I don't know, I, the other one has lines. I can't really describe it right now because I can't think of it, can't picture it. But anyway, I've got my bunny punch, and what I'm going to do is just punch out my bunny. And then the other thing that I did with my bunny, and you could do, I could turn him around if I wanted to. If I want him to face the other direction, use the other side, whatever you want to do. Um, I have my trio of linen threads. This came in Mossy Meadow in this Calypso Coral, and it also comes in like a, uh, it was probably Coastal Cabana or Bermuda Bay. Just to make things fun, I'm doing this backwards and having him turn the other way. Give yourself plenty of thread, especially if you have fat fingers like I do. We're talking about this. My son has beautiful long fingers. My daughter does. My husband does. And I got my grandfather's stubby fat fingers, which are not ideal for tying and they're not ideal for playing piano. Okay, but nevertheless, my bow is tied and I'm gonna call it good enough. Okay, I have a scissor right here, even though it's not my other scissors. Let's get that out of here. And I'm going to, I could pop this one up or I could do it level. I think I'm gonna pop this one up. I didn't do it on my first card here. You see that I didn't pop it up, but I am gonna pop this one up. You know what I did? I know why I didn't pop it up. I'm gonna put the um, dimensional right over top of the thread because that kind of holds it in place too so that it doesn't untie or move on me. Oh, my Mickey is downstairs listening to me. He's very attentive right now. Um, I think the reason I didn't pop it up initially was because I popped up the whole square, but that's okay. And I gotta look at it sideways here so I can do this straight. There we go. That's that. I forgot, I'm gonna glue this on. So this is my strip. This is a half inch by five and a half. It's going to go the full length of the paper. If you don't wanna go the full length, you can actually do five and a quarter inches and end it right at the um, edge of your embossed piece. But I'm gonna do the full piece like I did before. Um, the last thing I want to do is find my strip of white paper scrap which appears to be MIA. What a surprise. This is what my stamp room looks like, guys. It looks, what you see is totally what you get. When I create, it's like a tornado goes off. Uh, speaking of tornadoes, I'm so sorry to everybody that's in the area that had those devastating tornadoes this weekend. Praying for all of you, I really am. There's so much devastation, so much sadness, shooting, bad weather. It's very, very sad. And you're all in my prayers. Seriously. Okay, hang on one second while I get another strip of white paper here. anybody's wondering, I save these half-inch strips, I think I've said this multiple times, for the insides of my papers, it's four by five and a quarter. And when I am cutting off a half-inch strip, which happens on the bottom and on the side, of when I cut my full pieces of paper into four by five and a quarter inch pieces, I have these long strips left, and I use these for my sentiments. Okay, so now what we're going to do is some embossing. And yes, I can't find my chamois here. So yes, I am licking my stamp clean so that my embossing is gonna be nice and clean. I have, look at this. But you know what? I've got um, a sponge to remove ink, so I'm gonna work on that afterwards. Dawn usually does a pretty decent job too. Dawn dish detergent and a scouring sponge. Okay, this half inch 
uh, strip. It's a little tight for it, but it does work. Okay, let me see. Stamping right there. Yep, that wonky, you can see the wonky uh, stamping. This is a really dirty Versamark. It's been well loved. Trust me, I've used this one over and over again. I've got my little glad container and I've labeled all of mine gold, black, white, clear, silver, copper, whatever I need with our six embossing powders. And I keep them in a drawer with these little orange leaf spoons. Oh, you know what I should be talking about too? I told you about my stamp camp and I'll post the link to that so that people can still sign up yet. Like I said, you can take it to go or in person. Um, but I also have my, uh, on my in-person retreat on April 29th and the link, uh, the openings, I've got seven openings and that is going to expire on April 5th. You can't get into that after then because I have to be busy preparing. Okay, this is my non-stampin' up heat tool, but it does a good job, so. I'm going to emboss just until, see it's starting to get hot now, just until I see the magic of this changing to a, a shiny gold. There we go. You can see that this has a little strip that's darker. That's not ready yet. I have to get it all so that it turns. There's no darkness there. Let me see that. Perfect. And voila, that is embossed. Hopefully you can see that. There we go. That's where it is. Sorry about that. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is just angle this, angle this, and hopefully it's pretty even. It's pretty much the same angle. And I'm going to also pop this up down at the bottom. So I'll use my little mini embossing dots. Use a couple of them. I don't want it to fold in on itself, so I'll use four on here. Sometimes I'm a little stingy with my uh, dimensionals, but if it's going, if your little piece is going to um, buckle on itself, you're going to want to make sure you have more. You know what? I'm going to cut off a tiny bit more right there because I can. There we go. And I think I could do the same on this side, just a tiny bit closer on both sides. There we go. And now I've got my piece of paper here. And I'm going to just layer that right over top. And I'm going to pop this up too. Um, when you pop it up with dimensionals, make sure you put like a piece of paper over top of it. And even that doesn't guarantee it. But if you put a piece of paper, um, the Stampin' Up! invitation postcards work really well to protect your card fronts and also to make it so that they slide right through the meter when you're sending it through the mail. Because... Um, if you have, if it's raised more than, I think somebody said the thickness of our paper trimmer. If you can slide it through there, you're usually good. But otherwise, it's going to cost more. It's going to be a one ounce stamp, which I have no idea how much that costs anymore. Because if our regular stamps are 62 cents, it's probably 75 or 80 cents. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that so cute? So I did it a, a different direction. I actually like this pattern. Really, really cute. So you can use any pattern. And then the only other thing that I did is I used our pearls, our flat pearls, because to me, this looks like an Easter egg, especially a fancy Easter egg. Oh no, we're gonna put it in front. If I put it behind, it's gonna look like something else. And our bunny, this is a clean bunny. We don't do that with this bunny. This one doesn't make messes. There we go. Just a couple right there in front um, of our flat pearls. Um, actually, the flat pearls are one of the things you're getting as part of my retreat. So excited. So, so excited. It's by the bay is the, the theme, so obviously you have to have pearls. But isn't that so cute? So here is our two cards. So these are two of the cards that we're making um, Thursday night. Let me show you the other two projects. 
This card was directly cover, uh, copied off of Pinterest, but I changed the paper. This is the country gingham paper. I changed it to the mint macaron um, sideways gingham paper, and I changed the colors of my coloring. Isn't that so pretty? Um, and I believe... I believe I don't know what color this bunny is colored, but he is adorable. And then of course our butterfly. So this is another one. This is the light green. Oh, actually this is Parakeet Party that I used right there. So I use polished pink and Parakeet Party um, just for some different colors. So there you go. And polished pink, hmm, pretty sure that one's going to pale papaya. They're all going, yes. So that Easter egg will be no longer next year because you're not gonna be able to get those colors unless it comes in the color refresh. So anyway, that's it. Oh, and then this, this little box. This was from Brenda Quintana. I found this on YouTube, um, punched out the bunny. She actually colored one and used it as a tag and I forgot to do that. There's no ribbon here because I forgot that part. But look at these cute, this is a slider box with, and it's a double walled box, so it's nice and strong. I found these Easter egg Hershey Kisses. There's a whole bunch of them. So when you come to my class, you're going to walk away with that too. So anyway, those are the five, four projects for Thursday night. Sorry, upside down. I had a great time with you tonight. Sorry I rushed, but hopefully you got inspired. And a lot of these things, like this card, is probably three and three quarter inches by five inches, or maybe even three and a half by four and three quarters, this white. And it shows a little bit of designer paper. So um, have fun with your mats and your edges and everything, but hopefully you uh, got some great ideas and you can join me next week. Have a great night. Happy stamping this week. Bye.